Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, host and head bookologist here at the Get Literate Podcast. I'm a book-loving, notebook-hoarding reader and writer on a mission to change lives one book and one notebook at a time. On this podcast, we explore the power of bookology and leading literate lives. We talk all things books and reading and notebooks and writing mixed in with mindful practices and creativity to create lives we love. You can expect regular weekly episodes focused on three books you need to know about on a bookish theme and how to bring those themes to life in our actual lives too. You can also expect author interviews, notebooking inspiration, and topics to help us grow through what we go through and take inspired action to make our lives better. So grab a notebook and your TBR list and let's get literate. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Get Literate Podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie, here as always to explore the ways that reading and writing can make life better. But today, we're going to talk about how we can make our reading and writing lives a bit more fun and enjoyable and even healthier too. Dupe Witherick of Thrive AF alcohol-free, by the way, is here to help us find our summer reading and writing vibes with delicious mocktail recipes that we are pairing with the perfect book recommendation. This is going to be a fun summer episode. So Dupe, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Get Literate podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me on, Stephanie. It's wonderful to be here. Well, I feel like Anna K. Morris would be quite proud of us right now chatting about how we can have more fun this summer (laughs) by pairing the things that we love together. And listener, for, for those that don't know or didn't attend, a couple of weeks ago, Dupe and I were part of a fun summit hosted by Anna K. Morris, who I have mentioned on the podcast before who has been a guest on the podcast before. And that summit was all about having more fun. Having more fun just for the sake of having more fun this summer. And she invited this really amazing group of energetic, happy, aligned women together to talk about their thing and how that thing could help them have more fun. My thing, of course, was books. And Dupe's thing was living alcohol free and having some really yummy mocktail recipes so that you're having fun while not feeling like you're sacrificing the social aspect or the other aspects of having mocktails instead of cocktails. So as soon as I heard Dupe start to talk and and Dupe, it was instant. I thought I have to ask her to come on the podcast. I was in your Instagram messenger pretty quickly (laughs) Because I knew we could just have a lot of fun pairing those mocktails with with perfectly themed books. And so yeah. I, I'm excited for it. Have you done something like that before? Or could we say this is the first? No, I haven't. And I love the idea. As soon as you said it, I was like, oh my goodness, why have I not thought of this? And it's brilliant. So well done for um, to, for coming up with the idea. And I'm excited um, for whoever's listening to to hear about mocktails and books because obviously you can drink mocktails and read books whereas when you drink a cocktail or two you might forget what you've really what you've read so or end up reading the same line over and over again so it's genius that's right that's right it's much easier to read when you are sober right (laughs) indeed All right. Well, why don't we start with with introductions for those that perhaps didn't get to the fun summit, and this is the first time that they are hearing about you. Give us yeah. give us the backstory, a little bit about you, and how Thrive AF came to be. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So, I am I'm Dupe. I am the founder of Thrive Alcohol Free, and I'm an alcohol free well being and transformational coach. I'm also a podcast host of Thrive Alcohol Free, and I'm the author of A Cocktail of Clarity. And all of this has happened literally in the past three and a half, just over three and a half years. So, well, coming up to four years, it'll be four years in November. On the 9th of November, I will have been four years alcohol free. 
And in that time, I've mentioned a few of the things I've done, but I've also run two marathons. I've done various things. And I absolutely believe that being alcohol free is a superpower and also a manifestation tool, I suppose, as well. Um, it's incredible the benefits that I've seen personally and then also have seen my clients and others experience. And so I'm on a mission, really, to help other women, mainly women, I work mainly with women, but I do work with men as well, um, that really help people see that by ditching drinking for good, you are absolutely not giving anything up, you are only gaining. And it's a way of thriving, living your full potential and your best life alcohol free. So prior to four years ago, I was I describe myself as a normal drinker. There was no rock bottom. The term we tend to use is grey area drinker. So, like many of us, I went to university. Um, you know, I live in the UK, so college for you in the US. But I went to university, and our first week is freshers week. I imagine you have something similar in the US, or did back then. And um, that's when you get into, you know, you meet people for the first time. You're away from home. You join different clubs and all of it seems to revolve around getting to know people with a glass of something or a pint of something or whatever. And it was always alcohol based. And I remember thinking in my in my first year, I was in a you're in a hall of residence. So like the university accommodation and there were, only, there were about 180 of us there. And I only remember two people not drinking. And in my mind, they no one spoke to them. They were a bit ostracized. So for me, drinking alcohol was part of being an adult and part of showing that you were fun and that people wanted to socialize with you and all the rest of it. And then that sort of continued. I ended up working in the city for many years in the corporate world. And I was a management consultant, and so that involved working with lots of different clients all over the globe. So business travel was a big thing, client dinners, networking, conferences, all of that. And again, seemed to be revolved around working hard, playing hard. And so you'd work quite long hours, but then you would go out for dinner with clients and then you'd have a glass of wine. And it just felt like it was just something you did. It wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't... Um, negative at all it just seemed to be the norm and that's what society tells you is normal and then if you think about tv programs and films and and all the rest of it the marketing associated with alcohol is just there it's people don't think about it but you'll you'll notice that within however many minutes someone's got a glass of wine on certain programs and or a, has got a whiskey or whatever and that's you know that's the thing and so i never really questioned it i never thought that you know, you were allowed to stop drinking, really. <laughs> or if you, the only reason you would is if maybe religious reasons or if you had hit rock bottom. So the concept of it just hadn't, didn't really cross my mind. But as I hit my, I was, I was in my late thirties, I was getting to the point where I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I found that I couldn't drink. I, I used to drink heavy red wines. I loved your Malbecs and Riochas and things like that. And so I would, that would be my go-to drink with a meal. And I got to the point where I was not enjoying it. I couldn't drink. A glass would just give me a headache. I was like, this is not fun. So then I thought, and the, the, the thought didn't cross my mind to stop drinking at all at that point. I just thought, well, I'll go on to the lighter red wines because there's less alcohol in them. So it'll be easier. It won't affect me as much. And then that didn't work. So then I went on to white wines and I was never really a big white wine drinker, but thought, well, I'll try that. As I said, I just didn't think I could stop. So fundamentally, it got to the point where I just wasn't enjoying it. And I decided to take a 21 day break. Um, I tried your dry Januaries and Lents and all the rest of it before, probably got to about a week and then thought, well, I've done so well, I might as well drink on the weekend to celebrate the fact that I had done a week. <laughs> and then inevitably you get to Monday and you think, well, what's the point that I've failed? So I might as well carry on not as normal. Right. Um, so 21 days felt like it could be doable, but knowing my previous patterns, it wasn't 
going to happen. Um, and I certainly didn't think that would be it and I'd never drink again. And so I took the 21 day break. And interestingly enough, a few things happened during that time, which led me to think I'll keep going. And then 21 days became 30, became three months became six months I discovered new hobbies and passions and just magic or opportunities seemed to come my way as well and so I thought let's keep going and here I am as I said just over three and a half years alcohol free and so that's what's inspired me to to really promote alcohol free living and an alcohol free lifestyle I can relate to so much of, of what you have said, first of all, red wine was hands down my favorite too. I yeah. I loved enjoying that. And you're right. It was so ingrained in the culture. Like, oh, I'm a busy mom. I'm really tired. I, I deserve that glass of wine at the end of the day. And I, I did. I deserved a lot at the end of the day as we all do. <laughs> but as I, as I got older, yeah, I realized, okay, that glass of wine it's making me feel awful. Mm -hmm. And I, I got a lot of um, physical symptoms. I couldn't get through half a glass of wine without the headache or, mm -hmm. or feeling flushed. And it, mm -hmm. it was something that I knew just wasn't really good for me anymore. Mm -hmm. But like you, I thought, well, maybe I switch. Maybe, yeah. maybe a different alcohol won't feel bad. And so then I tried the white wine or then I tried, you know, the clear alcohol. Everybody had a suggestion, you know, of, yeah. of which one would, would help because it does feel more socially acceptable to change what you're drinking and attempt to feel better or to not stop rather than just say, you know what, that, that just isn't for me. And I know when, when I stopped drinking and again, not because there was a rock bottom, because it just doesn't make me feel well physically. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was hard because people, well, why, why, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you like saying no to it was actually the stranger thing to do than, <laughs> than just accepting the drink. And there was a period of time where I felt, okay, I'm not going out anymore <laughs> because <laughs> ordering, you know, a club soda with a twist of lime gets you a weird look when you go to the bar with, with a friend. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's funny. Alcohol is the only drug you need to justify not taking, you know, yes. people don't turn around and say, Oh, go on, have a little bit of cocaine. They <laughs> yeah. don't say that, you know, but that people don't see it as a drug it's drugs and alcohol. But actually, alcohol is right. an addictive substance. It's a drug. It would, if it was to come in, today it would most likely be banned based on the impact that it has on health and and so many things so um yeah it, it is amazing people's reaction and that's what keeps people stuck for so long and stops people from taking that break or or saying that they're going to stop drinking or even thinking about it even thinking it's a it's a possibility right. so um I absolutely agree. And hopefully things are changing. It feels like there's a lot more talk at the moment about um, being alcohol free and the impacts on your health with alcohol. And I've certainly seen a shift. I was a judge at the World Alcohol Free Awards, which are all the alcohol free is the, the biggest, um, it's the biggest global competition for alcohol free drinks. And we had hundreds of product products from over 21 countries and if I think back to when I stopped drinking you probably had a choice of two or three they, right. they were around but you couldn't really get hold of them and there were certainly the popular the popular drinks that ne now have come out like um Tank Ray Zero, Gordon Zero, you know Guinness Zero, all the things that the more popular mainstream um, drinks they weren't there at the time so it's really seen I've really seen a shift I personally tasted over 50 products in that when wow. I was tasted blind tasting and so it is amazing how things are moving in a direction where people are more mindful and certainly the younger generation seem to be far more sensible than we were in terms of knowing that uh, alcohol might not be the best thing for them so yeah. it'll be interesting to see what happens you know as I've got a 10 year old daughter. So I'll be interested to see what happens by the time she's ready to drink. Um, 
and whether she decides to do that or not. And that I really feel like at least she'll have the choice. It's not going to be a given that you have to do it, which yes. is which is great. Yes. And we kind of joked earlier in the episode for people listening to this podcast, we are hardcore readers. We love to write. We love notebooking. We love learning new things. And mm -hmm. That means that mixing with alcohol can be wonderful, but when you're grabbing your book out for an afternoon of nice summertime reading, it will be it would be nice to have a drink that feels yes. fun and indulgent, but actually still makes you feel good and clear and and healthy, um, but not making you feel like you're missing out on yeah. something, which which I love about you know, the, the way that you've talked about that, um, mm. the past and at the summit, these, these mocktails can, mm. can be treats. They can be mm. indulgent treats that make us feel really good that we're taking the time to, you know, just elevate the experience mm. a bit, but, but in a way that can feel really good for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I talk a lot about JOMO, the joy of missing out instead of FOMO the fear, as we all know, the fear of missing out. And it really is quite interesting, especially if you are ready to take a break or you've recently decided to take a break from alcohol. If you're just drinking tea, coffee, water, your brain and your inner child thinks you're absolutely missing out, thinks that this is not right, this isn't what I'm used to doing because your subconscious has so many memories in the bank where in certain occasions, in lots of occasions for both, most people, you ha automatically have a drink. And summer is one of those occasions, summer, vacations, you know, um, just being out when it's the sun is shining. Yeah. It's an automatic response to reach for a glass of something. And if you are with a group of friends or with family and everyone else is drinking you will certainly think oh well what the hell I might as well have a drink because that's what you've always done so having the option on the alternative to do something different and having that in your arsenal so that you can actually go to that helps you to get rid of that inner child and also you know the next day you can be quite smug because you feel absolutely fine so um right. It's a win-win. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you're so right. I think summer as a season, you know, maybe the holiday season is also a, a, another strong yeah. alcohol season. Yeah. Summer, you're out by the pool, you need a cold beverage, you're going maybe to a concert or you're on vacation, which yeah. which is a, a typical one as well. So yeah, those summer vibes really do as a, as a society overall tend mm. to tend to involve that which which is fine if that's what you choose but if you don't it's so nice to feel like you have the alternative yet you're still having just as fun you know as yeah. as someone else so that's absolutely yeah. so absolutely. in thinking about summer you know for the listeners here summer it means slower it usually it, it may mean getting crazy schedules with kids and sports, but typically it means it's a little it's a little slower. There's reading, there's notebooking, there's family vacations, there's doing all, all sorts of, of fun things. What is what is your summer vibe? Do you go on vacation? Do you have a, a typical kind of summer thing that you like to do? Yeah, it's interesting. So we tend to go on vacation, well, either in the winter uh, or in the summer, and because that's when sort of longer holidays are. And we're actually going to Bali this summer for a month. And so I'm very excited about that. And there'll be lots of mocktails drunk, I'm sure. Um, but I would say we always get away even if it's like a long weekend or a week or whatever over the summer just to do something slightly different mm -hmm. and um one year we actually did a canal holiday with our daughter and friends who have children the same age and that was actually lots of fun so a canal boat 
on the canals in the UK. And it was just wonderful. What I remember about it, this was before I stopped drinking, was we had bottles of champagne and wine. And, you know, it was that sort of, we were cruising a lot. You, you go very slowly. I mean, you, you don't go very far over the week, but it's just very slow paced. And it's just a lovely environment. Um, but again, you have time to to really just be and so for me summer is really just about taking stock being and enjoying the environment around you be that the beach be that the the pool be that the the canal <laughs> canal ways etc so yeah it's definitely about taking stock and and relaxing so yeah and it sounds like just being present exactly yeah definitely yeah. definitely which yeah. is unfortunately sometimes a hard thing for us to do is to stay <laughs> present like that but is is definitely so important and always like one of my life goals <laughs> yeah and, and I think for me that's one of the the joys of being alcohol free for me because I I realized that I'm a lot more present and even just noticing those day-to-day -day things that you probably wouldn't even oh I never really used to take in you know looking at the leaves on the trees the flowers looking at the stars and just being more when you go for walks being more aware of your environment and what's around and then being more present with your you know with our daughter with my husband and just taking in their conversations and Again, I think summer helps you to do that because you're not as maybe pressured as you are, especially when you've got a bit of a break from work. Um, but I do think it's the biggest gift you can give yourself because being present just helps you stay in the moment. And one of the books I've read recently was The Power of Now. Mm -hmm. And it's all about being present. And I, I really think it's so important to be able to be wherever you are truly be there and so much joy happens from that space yeah gosh I completely agree I completely agree mm -hmm. although I do love getting lost in someone else's present in the books that I'm reading <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true but you're being fully present because you're reading the book and you're there and you're right. you're in it <laughs> right but that was a good segue for us to get to the, to some some fun things today, which is you have some of your favorite mocktail recipes so that we yeah. can try them over the summer. And I took that recipe and paired it with yeah. what I thought would be a fun, perfectly themed book for someone to to pick up this genius this summer. Yeah. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us. Three favorites, and and I know later you will share. You have a a downloadable uh, uh, that someone can sign up for and get it right to their inbox. So if you're listening, listeners to these recipes and you want them, Dupe has you covered. We will make sure that she tells you where to get it at the end, and we'll put it in the show notes as well. But for now, just imagine what that lovely drink could look and and feel like um, as we talk. So. I'm turning yeah. it over to you. What What's the first first mocktail you want to tell us about? Perfect. So the first one, and on all of the, all three of them are available as alcohol cocktails. So hopefully you will know them all. Um, but the first one is the alcohol-free mojito, which is the nojito. <laughs> and I, the reason I picked this one was because it reminds me of a vacation. We were, um, it was probably my first alcohol free vacation abroad and we were in the Dominican Republic and I remember arriving we, we arrived quite late and so we really just had time to go for dinner we didn't really explore where we were we went for dinner and then we kept, we sort of went back to to our um to our suite and um I arrived thinking, well, I got through a whole plane journey, a flight without alcohol, which was great and felt really good. And then got there and I thought, well, whatever happens, we're going to enjoy it. And if it means drinking water the whole time, I will. It's fine. Don't worry. Um, because I didn't think they'd at the time as said alcohol free drinks weren't really a thing. And so I just thought, well, we'll just see. And I got there and I think I asked, is there anything alcohol free? And they said, 
uh, they looked at me blankly. So I said, okay, I'll just have some water. <laughs> and I went to bed thinking, oh my goodness, I've got, you know, a week of just drinking water and coffee and tea, which is what I did initially. And it's, it's not great. So, um, Luckily, my husband, bless him, then went over to a bar and explored what they had and explained that I didn't drink. And the barman made me a nojito. And so I was on the nojitos pretty much that whole week. And I loved it. And I felt like I was a proper adult enjoying myself. It looked like I was drinking a mojito with everyone else. And um, it was fabulous. So that's my memory of that. And that's why I chose the nojito as my first one. And so what exactly is in a nojito? Yeah, so a nojito is um, obviously lime. Um, it is, uh, let me just pull up the actual recipe so I don't miss anything. Um, so you have exactly what it is. Um, so a nojito is mint leaves as you would expect it is fresh lime it has got some caster sugar and the good thing about it is you can have and again i was like no not too sweet so you can put as little or as much caster sugar as you want and it has soda water so it's really easy and then you garnish it with mint leaves and lime slices so it's a fun mocktail it is technically like a soda and lime really um with, but it looks better because it's got some mint leaves it's got a bit of sugar and it's got um and it's got actual lime slices as well as the juice well the book that i decided to pair it with because a a typical mojito if i'm right because i have to be honest i've never had one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> typically okay. involves rum it right. does, yes. That is, it normally that is alcohol for that. Yes, that's yeah. the alcohol that, oh. that's added to it, yes. So in thinking about rum and thinking about, you know, where rum is made, I instantly had that, you know, warmer weather, va vacation kind of, of vibes, yeah. Caribbean, Jamaica, that kind of, yeah. um, that kind of background. And the one book that instantly came to mind that... I may have said on the podcast before, but I adored it, um, is Black Cake by Charmaine mm. Wilkerson. And mm. I love, Dupe, you don't know this about me, but I love books that are family sagas. Like the crazier the family, the more that I enjoy the book. And I love when books just don't shy away from the reality of a complex family. They don't sh shy away from the hard stuff. And they just kind of put it out there so you can you know compare to your own crazy family perhaps um but yes. I really I really love those and I love a book that also can give me multiple perspectives whether mm. that's multiple perspectives between characters multiple perspectives moving you know back and forth and past through present and so this book is a beautifully complex family saga which happens to be a family that was torn apart by some misunderstandings, some hurt feelings, a whole lot of fear. And it opens up with an opportunity for, and I, I don't want to give spoilers, but an opportunity for the people in this family to figure out those family secrets, to figure out what went wrong, to figure out how they might come back together as a family. And the one thing that ties the whole book the generations, the characters together is this Caribbean black cake, which has a really yummy rum in it, um, along with a whole lot of other things. But the the theme of that cake and the ingredients in it is so strong from page one to the end and, and really shows how it goes deeper than a dessert, right? It is It is woven into our existence. It is woven into their family, into their history. And I think it's a good pairing because of the location, because of the ingredients that may be in the mojito, but not the nojito. And it's just a really good book for diving into family and making those connections, which often a lot of people think about in the summer is having that extra time to really do. So I've paired your nojito with Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. 
<laughs> Fantastic. I love it. It sounds great. And um, you're right, you know, rum is, we're in Barbados. And again, that was very much, rum was the, the theme and mm -hmm. um, you could not <laughs> have it. So uh, yeah, I think that's fantastic. I love that. Okay. Drink number two. What do you got? So number two is the Cosmopolitan. So we all know that. the Cosmopolitans. <laughs> and again, so that's, again, for me, the time that I grew up in, again, I think one of the reasons that I thought alcohol was glamorous and sophisticated was I grew up with Sex and the City and Carrie Bradshaw and going for cocktails and living the life and being, you know, just life in New York. You just thought that's what you want to be when you grow up. You know, <laughs> it was uh, so for me, um, Cosmo is obviously normally with Cosmopolitan's normally with vodka, but this recipe is cranberry juice, lime juice, sparkling water, and orange juice. Oh, that sounds good. That one sounds really good. I think a Cosmopolitan would probably be. Well, no, I know what's coming. Number third. Never mind. I think <laughs> right now I like the second one. I won't give away. <laughs> I won't give away the third one. But, but again, I want to just highlight the importance of putting things in an adult glass as well. And it's really funny, isn't it, how we have different names for glasses. But this looks really good in a martini glass. Um, you know, the, the no heat would be lovely in a long glass. And again, you know, we talk about wine glasses. I don't know why we call them wine glasses or champagne flutes, but really they are just glasses. So just right. putting your drinks into those types of glasses again helps trick the mind and gives you um, a different view of what you're drinking and how you're drinking it. And you still get the same feeling. So you're yeah. creating the feeling that you're looking for. I love that. I figured out a, a life hack for me. I'm a terrible water drinker. I need to drink more water. I don't like to drink more water. I forget about it. But if after my morning cup of coffee, I rinse out that cup and I fill it with water the rest of the day, mm. I will sip on that all day as if it were my cup of coffee instead of my wow. water bottle. I have oh. no idea why it works, but that's you know, amazing. Information matters. How it, it does looks, really it matters. Does. You're absolutely right. And that's a great hack. I always say to get more water in you, have a glass of water by your bed for the morning. So and drink that first thing. And then at least, you know, you've got your first intake and then that right. encourages you to drink more during the day. But I love the fact that you do it with a with a, you know, as we talk about the different just using a similar cup that you actually enjoy doing something yes. with. It makes you feel like you're enjoying drinking water, yeah. which is a fab hack. I'm going to try that morning hack. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> it works and it's really good for the brain as well. And a really good way to sort of yeah. kick off the day. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So for the Cosmopolitan, I, I love the, the look of it. It sounds colorful and light and fun. And the drink, you know, the alcohol that is missing is vodka. And so yeah. a book that instantly came to mind. And and it's funny, when I looked at your drinks, three books instantly came to mind. I didn't have to do much searching. Amazing. <laughs> but the book that I would pair for the Cosmopolitan is called Wedding Season by L. Evans. It's brand new, just released a couple of weeks ago. Um, for those of you who who know my book world, it's from Zibby Books, who, you know, I love here on this podcast. I adore this book, just like I know I would adore this drink. It is, it is just so much fun. And it is set in the South, um, back and forth across a couple of, of states, actually, um, Tennessee and Georgia. And it is about the dramatics of a Southern wedding, two Southern weddings, um, in, in fact, and one shared bridesmaid who is trying to navigate both weddings, both sets of families, both sets of plannings and all of the things that come with it with a little bit of devious family drama underneath. And so the book is fun. It is a lot of fun. It is very funny. It is lighthearted while still dealing with some of those more um, 
deeper tensions, I guess. But the one thing that is consistent throughout this book is the beautiful outfits and all the drinks. Every party has a different drink theme. Every wedding has a different drink vibe. Every interaction has something that really defines that bride, that that wedding, that party. And so the book is just filled with alcohol in general, I think, but in particularly a, a drink that would be like the Cosmopolitan. And it has so many summer vibes because it's wedding season. It's summer. A lot of people are getting married. And I think if a Cosmopolitan would have been your choice and now a Cosmopolitan is your choice, you want something light and fun and fruity and wedding issue or wedding season. Um, actually, I said wedding season. It's wedding issues. It's wedding issues by L. Evans. How did I do that? I hate when I mess up my titles. All the books become jumbled. It is such a fun read. I think everyone could add it to their summer TBR, but especially drinking a really fun drink like the one you just shared. <laughs> the wedding issues, everyone. Right wedding now. issues. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I think that's that's great. And it is funny, isn't it? How, again, weddings are a real thing. You know, one of the things I help my clients with is how to navigate those alcohol free first. And a lot of people talk about weddings or birthdays or um, obviously holidays, those big, the first the first um, festive season, the first new year, et cetera. And so yeah. weddings are always a big thing because you're right. That's another time when it's just flowing, isn't it? And that's yeah. what people do. And especially even just the toast, you know, what do I do with the toast? Because obviously if I'm not drinking, what do I do? And so I give people alternatives, et cetera, um, to try and take with them and and all the rest of it. But um, I really love that that book recommendation, Wedding Issues. Yeah. I will look it up. Well, yeah. you would have your book cut out for you to transform some of those or your work cut out for you to transform <laughs> some of those, some of those tweets in the book. It might be fun I'm for sure. you to read and offer some alternative suggestions. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll have a few up my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Third one, which I think is going to be my favorite. Tell us about that one. Yeah, so the last one is the alcohol-free Espress No Martini. So um, again, uh, I used to love an Espresso Martini and that obviously had had vodka or gin, depending on how you like your martinis. Um, and uh, that was something I would have at the end of an evening or whatever as a bit of a... An, an after what's the word I'm looking for not an aperitif the one afterwards uh, at the end of a meal and um yeah so it was wonderful when I discovered um the espresso martini and that was actually just before the festive season so as I said I stopped drinking on the 9th of November and I decided to do 21 days because I thought there was no way I would be alcohol free over Christmas and New Year it just wasn't going to happen there are too many traditions too many things I do you've got too many rituals and a lot of them revolved around drinking <laughs> so it wasn't the best timing um but I thought well why not I'll continue and um I discovered a company called Liars, which does a lot of different alcohol free. Uh, it's an Australian company and that you can get it, get their drinks globally. And they do lots of different alcohol free um, things like alcohol free gin, alcohol free vodka, alcohol free um, various whatever. You pr can probably get it. They've got a range of hundreds. And one of the things they do is a coffee original and then a white cane spirit that you can basically use to create your espresso martini. So you add those and you also add fresh espresso or a cold drip coffee. You add some vanilla syrup, some ice cubes and a coffee bean to garnish. And so that is the espresso martini. And again, I made them over Christmas and it was just wonderful to again, feel like I was keeping the ritual, but changing the ingredient. Yeah. Oh, this one sounds so good to me. I love coffee. I love coffee a little too much. Um, <laughs> so I was excited to see this one because again, I knew the perfect book 
that I think would pair well. And I think it's a fun one to read over the summer as well, because there's a little bit of fantasy elements in it. Fun, a fun, um, we're kind of bending time and doing a little bit of, of time travel through a coffee shop. So this book that I think pairs well is called Before the Coffee Gets Cold by mm. Toshikazu Kawaguchi. It is set in Tokyo. And in Tokyo, there is this cafe that has been serving this very specially brewed coffee for over a hundred years. Um, but it's not just offering coffee. When they buy the coffee, they get this unique experience, which is the chance to travel back in time. Oh. So oh, you can imagine a lot of a lot of people want to go. Some want to see people that they have lost. Some want to, um, you know, see their sister one last time or meet meet the daughter that they never knew. There are a lot of um, touching, very moving, emotional stories, but it does have the the lighter hearted side of when you go into the coffee shop and when you get that cup of coffee, you have to sit in a particular seat. You can't leave the cafe during that time. And you must come back to the present before your coffee gets cold. So there's, there are some, you know, restrictions on there, but allows people to travel back in time. Of course, it makes us think, what would we do differently? What would we change if we could travel back in time? And who would we want to see? What would we want to do? And I think reading a book like that then makes you stop and think, so what could I do differently right now? in order to not have those kinds of thoughts later. I always love that about those time travel books. Yeah. And so I think summer, when we are trying to slow down, we are trying to be more present. This is a book that might help us remind us of why that is so important. And of course, there's coffee. There's coffee on every <laughs> page of this book, which matches so perfectly with your uh, your coffee drink, the espresso. No. I love the way that, <laughs> the, I love the play on the names of all of them. So that's the co Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. And they're all good. So I think listeners, you just have to pick the drink that resonated with you most and then make that drink and then get the book that pairs with it and just decide that's how you're going to go this summer. <laughs> I love it. I think that's they're just so clever. And I haven't read any of those books. So I'm going to go out and get all those books as well and have a read because it's interesting. <laughs> I'm beginning to think I need to go to Japan because Japan keeps coming, coming up in conversations. Yeah. Our friends have just come back from Japan. They've had a fantastic time. They were there for two weeks. And I don't know, I read Ikigai recently and I've been obviously, I, I don't know if you know about the um, the Blue Zones. And yes. Anyway, I've just become fascinated with Japan and I actually learned Japanese 20 years ago. So I studied oh, wow. it and I was able to read, write and speak um, Japanese and so I could do the three sets of characters the hiragana katakana kanji and right from top to bottom right to left and I'd read back and go I've just written that and the un I understand what it means it's very strange but I've never actually been so I'm very I feel like Japan is calling me so I'm probably going to go for that book first and have a read of that because I'm fascinated um, yeah. by Japan at the moment so yeah. that's a little bit of insight into my <laughs> my thoughts <laughs> that's perfect I love that because I you knew I was going to ask you which one which one do you think you might lean yeah. into first I think that is a really yeah. good choice and yeah. I would second that I think you should go to Japan not that I've been there yet but I mm. recently all the books that I'm reading yeah. I love Beth Kempton who has done a, a lot of of work and research um it sounds just like an amazing yeah. gorgeous place to enjoy and learn from so I, yeah go I'm gonna yeah. live vicariously through you <laughs> go first <laughs> okay well I'll let you know when it, when the trip's booked <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I mentioned earlier that if listeners wanted to get their hands on these actual recipes that they could you have mm. packaged them together plus more not just mm. these three but yeah, yeah. Lots of favorites where can listeners find that and find more about you if if they also want to explore more alcohol-free living or just get more of, of what you're offering? 
Thank you. So um, if you head to my website, thrivealcoholfree.com, you can, um, there, it's a pop up at the beginning, you can, you can certainly get it there. I'll also give you the link to go specifically to this to the way you can get the download it it's actually the te uh, my in my view the 10 must have mocktail recipes so you get te we talked about three but in this guide you get 10 they're all pretty simple to make you're not having to really go out and get fancy things as, as i said the liar the, the the espresso martini is probably the only one you, that, where you need to get something that um, it is potentially a bit more difficult, but Liars, as I said, is available everywhere if you want to go down that route, but I'm sure you can use alternatives. Um, but again, you know, you should be able to make them quite easily and, you know, enjoy the summer with them. So feel free to go and download them. And of course, um, my website, as I said, is Thrive Alcohol Free. I have my podcast, The Thrive, uh, which is also Thrive Alcohol Free. And I'm on Instagram at Thrive Alcohol Free as well. Perfect. I will make sure to put links to your website, your social media, as well as to your your top favorite mocktail recipes in the show Thank notes you. so that Thank listeners you. can get that. And listeners, after you listen, I would love for you to go find me, find Dupe online. Tell me which one, which, which drink is calling to you first? Which book do you think you might read first? I know we would both love your feedback. And if you have recommendations, for books that you think would pair really well with Dupay's uh, mocktail recipes, I want to hear those too. So find us on social media, find us in the show notes. As always, you can leave an audio message in your podcast platform as well. I would love to to hear about them. Thank you so much, Dupay, yes. for coming on. I this I think this is the most fun I've had on a podcast episode pairing <laughs> books and mocktails together. Well, thank you for your genius and being able to pair them so amazingly well. I'm I'm fascinated that you you were able to do that. So thank you for inviting me on, and it's been it's been so much fun. I've loved talking about. I always love talking about mocktails and alcohol free drinks. And so, if anyone wants to find out more, or you're curious about hearing, you know, you want some recommendations on some good alcohol free wines potentially, or other alternatives, gins, be whatever you know, and new new alcohol free drinks which i think are, are quite fun because they don't taste anything like the drinks we're used to so you're not really switching anything out you're trying something completely different then i'm happy to also um for you to connect and um i will send you some options so it's been um it's been really fun to be on so thank you for having me stephanie oh gosh thank you the pleasure is all mine and i i will be I will be picking your brain for where I can exactly find how to make that espresso because that is the first one that that I'm going to make. And I'm just so grateful that we connected in the fun summit and now over our shared love of mocktails and books. And and I'm just I'm just happy. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're most welcome. It's been lots of fun for me as well. Thank you. Wonderful. And listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of the Get Literate podcast, and I'll see you next week for another one. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Get Literate podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes and at alitlife.com. Plus, if you want more, you might like to join my Patreon community. There, you'll find additional inspiration for your reading and writing life, like bonus podcast episodes, bibliotherapy book calendars, monthly book clubs, notebooking challenges, live events, giveaways, and much, much more. It's only $5 a month, and you get instant access to all of the previous content, too. You can learn more at getliterate.co. And one more thing. If you love what you listened to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a friend. This helps the podcast grow and builds our bookish and notebookish community too. Thanks for listening.